I will tell you a story. And a uh, few years ago, I worked in uh, Nokia, and we had a great team, and uh, we had a lot of interesting uh, discussions. And uh, I remember one of them regarding professionalism. So me and a uh, friend of mine, Michał Nowak, we were discussing what professionalism means. And of course, we couldn't agree on one definition, but we agreed that it is somehow related with tools, with knowing tools, with knowing when to use them, how to use them, etc. And uh, yeah, this is all about, uh, uh, this presentation is all about tools. So uh, what I want to show you is uh, things that we use every day in TomTom uh, and I guess in many other companies uh, to create uh, mobile applications. So there will be no uh, cool kids, new technologies, uh, uh, everything that I will show you was somehow verified by the market. And I hope that uh, after this presentation, you have some uh, basic knowledge about uh, uh, most important platforms uh, for uh, mobile development, and uh, you'll be able to create uh, some easy applications. So let's move on. Um, first, let's define what I mean by mobile application. And of course, it is an application that works on mobile device. Um, and uh, there are two most significant players on the market. Of course, you know, that is uh, Google and Apple that produce uh, Android and iOS. And uh, that's probably the most important part. Uh, in this way, you have uh, support for your mobile phones, for your uh, tablets. Uh, but uh, there is something more because uh, Currently, there is also Android Wear and uh, Watch OS that uh, lets you write a code for your smartwatches, right? So the same principles may be used also to other kinds of uh, devices. Also, there are devices uh, uh, like television that are not so mobile, but they use the same concepts. So you may also think about creating applications for Android TV and TVOS. And also, there is this uh, Android Auto that lets you take advantage of uh, Android in your car. Okay? So let's talk about Android. It is uh, based on Linux. The most uh, important languages for this platform are Java and Kotlin. But of course, C and C++ are also supported. Uh, they use uh, Bionic instead of uh, Lipsy. It is a library that uh, Google produced. Uh, I guess uh, the reasons were some licensing issues. And uh, depending on uh, Android and the K version that I will talk uh, later, you may have uh, different support of uh, features from libc. So sometimes it may happen that uh, when you write your uh, C code or C++ code, uh, you, you must look uh, for some substitutes. Okay? And uh, Android is used on a variety of different devices and uh, also different CPU architectures. So uh, you need to support uh, all of them, RAM, MIPS, x86, x86-64. Okay? Regarding iOS, it's a bit different because it's uh, based on FreeBSD. You create your code mostly in Objective-C or Swift, uh, but of course C and C++ are also supported you need to provide support only for Apple devices. Uh, probably it is feasible to run uh, iOS on some uh, other devices, but uh, it is a nice thing to us as developers since we know exactly what devices we uh, need to support. And al also we have uh, less CPU architectures to support, so this only ARAM and x86-64. Uh, okay? Of course, uh, creating mobile application is not only about writing this uh, low-level code, so you need to remember about some visual aspects. So um, the most important is that we have a lot of different devices to support, and they have uh, different screen sizes. They have uh, different uh, screen densities, and uh, they may have different layouts, since uh, one application may work on uh, both uh, mobile phone and tablet, so uh, it may look completely differently. Okay, and uh, 
when you enter this mobile world, uh, mobile development world, developers will ask you, why C++? There are so many other ways. You can write it in Java, in Kotlin, blah, blah, blah. And uh, one of the reasons uh, that is that, uh, according to Microsoft, 75% of top 50 Android apps uh, use uh, support of C++. So probably there are some reasons for that. And one of them might be portability. So when you write your C++, C++ code, it may run on both iOS and uh, Android. It is a uh, like common denominator between those two platforms. And uh, thanks to that, you may write your business logic once, not twice. So usually when you want to have support of those two platforms, you need to write uh, your code once in Java, once in Objective-C. And here you write everything once, so you have uh, uh, less code duplicity. You also uh, have uh, less code to maintain. So there are some reasons to use C++. The other one is support of uh, some extra libraries. So if you are only in Java and uh, you only use uh, Java libraries, you might miss some things. And uh, currently TensorFlow is uh, quite uh, popular stuff. And uh, TensorFlow is uh, written in C++, TensorFlow, TensorFlow uh, Flow Mobile. So uh, uh, if you want to have some support of uh, neural networks, uh, and you are open to use C++ uh, in your mobile applications, then uh, it is great because you can just uh, uh, have more code to reuse in your application. The next thing is, of course, performance. As, uh, since we are at uh, quite C++-ish uh, conference, uh, uh, I don't have to explain you why per uh, performance uh, in case of C++ uh, might be better than in case of Java. But uh, in general, we use let's say, less memory to perform the same tasks. And uh, because of that, we are rather more cache-friendly than Java. And because of that, we perform the same tasks in uh, the, uh, the less number of uh, CPU cycles than uh, it uh, is done in Java. So uh, also because of that, we may reduce battery usage, since we just need uh, less energy to perform the same stuff. And uh, last but not least, oh, sorry. Uh, now you know the future. Okay, uh, so last but not least, uh, obfuscation. Sometimes it happens that uh, you have some um, secrets in your code and you don't want to give it away to your competitors. Uh, and uh, if you tried uh, in the past um, mm, the compiling uh, bytecode of Java, you will see everything there. So. Uh, if you don't use some special te techniques uh, for obfuscate your code in Java, uh, your competitors get everything. And you, if you compile your C++ code with some uh, uh, optimization flags, it might be a bit uh, harder. So this is all the reason. And to be honest with you, there are also reasons why not to use uh, C++. So one of them is that uh, we make this uh, mm, technological stack even more complex. So Probably uh, we may believe that Android developers have already a lot of uh, things uh, to know. Uh, and if you say to them, hey, 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 let's use C++ here, they will say, uh, no, I need to learn something more, so I don't like it. Uh, it's probably feasible to do it in uh, C++. So uh, when you enter such team, or if you lead such, such team, manage such team, uh, you must prepare people that if you decide to use C++ because of reasons that I shown on the previous slide, uh, you must learn new things. You must be open to learn new things. Uh, so things like Java Native Interface, Android NDK, etc., etc. Okay. The next thing is uh, that it is not uh, always uh, more performant uh, than in case of using uh, pure Java, and. Uh, we had a uh, nice talk uh, yesterday uh, that gave uh, Michał Wosh uh, about uh, speaking C++ and Java. Uh, and uh, probably those of you that attended know that uh, there is a reflection mechanism used uh, on this uh, layer of code. And uh, because of that, we don't uh, easily 
uh, just call a single method uh, between languages, but we need to do some extra computations. So Java native interface uh, calls are quite slow. And uh, yeah, mm, there's uh, a guideline for you that if you want to mix those two languages, uh, you should rather have a big uh, code in C++ that is triggered by one Java native interface call than have uh, fine-grained uh, uh, small functions that are called uh, through uh, this uh, language barrier. Okay, uh, the next reason why to not use, or the next two, uh, this clicker doesn't work so well, sorry, uh, are that uh, not whole API is uh, mm, available for you. If uh, Google or Apple, they produce new version of uh, Android or iOS, uh, then uh, their first goal is to give uh, great support for newest API for Objective-C or Java, or, or of course Kotlin or Swift. Uh, but uh, it is not uh, a case, uh, the case for uh, C or C++. So some things uh, might be missing. And, uh, yeah. and the last but not least, uh, increasing Android application size. So mm, there is uh, one thing uh, specific to Android packages, and that is uh, if I have an application on my phone, uh, and uh, I will take it and put it on your phone, and my phone have, uh, one, uh, has one CPU architecture, and your phone ha has different, this application will work. Okay? So because of uh, uh, that, that Java is used, uh, and the Java is compiled to bytecode that is portable between different CPU architectures, uh, you may just, uh, without recompiling uh, this application, use it on many platforms. And uh, this is not the case of uh, C++. So um, we always uh, compile our, our code uh, for a specific CPU architecture. So if you want to have this portability of a single application package, then you need to compile it for every uh, single CPU architecture that is uh, supported on Android. And uh, because of that, you have uh, a lot of uh, binary code duplicity at uh, such, uh, such application packages, uh, and that uh, affects the size, uh, the finite size if in bytes of, uh, of your package. Um, you may, of course, uh, break this, uh, this rule of having uh, portability uh, of your Android package, uh, because you can just provide uh, to users uh, um, CPU architecture-specific packages, right? So, uh, in this way, uh, you need to do some extra work, but it still works. And uh, let's move on. Also, uh, the continuation of my honesty to you, there are alternatives to C++ approach, so you might use uh, Xamarin. And uh, this is especially great if you have uh, uh, .NET developers uh, in your team that want to create some mobile applications. Uh, uh, they suffer uh, some of things that we also suffer, so they also don't get the newest API uh, when new uh, Android or iOS uh, comes. Uh, they need to wait for some uh, updates from uh, Xamarin. Uh, also, they have uh, a bit more complex uh, technological stacks. So besides of uh, using uh, Microsoft Visual Studio, uh, they also need to have some knowledge about uh, uh, iOS and Mac OS, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, um, Currently, it is feasible to use uh, Visual Studio on Mac OS. Uh, I heard so, at least. Uh, but uh, yeah, mm, that might be a bit more difficult than writing it uh, just strictly, uh, just in a C++. The next thing, or next two things, are uh, JavaScript approaches. So uh, there is a native script and a React script, uh, React Native, sorry, and. Uh, those are quite interesting uh, because you write your business logic in really simple language. Uh, so uh, in this way, you may easily modify it and uh, don't break uh, things. Uh, but on the other hand, probably performance uh, uh, will be lost. So uh, I didn't uh, measure that, uh, so I cannot answer such question. But uh, just uh, from my experience, I can tell that usually JavaScript uh, is a bit slower. Uh, and uh, the last uh, one, Kotlin native, uh, is uh, really interesting because uh, Kotlin is quite new language. It was uh, created for Android development and uh, 
nowadays it is uh, official language to use on this platform. And, uh, and guys from uh, JetBrains, they, they wanted Kotlin to be executed without Java Virtual Machine, because uh, on Android it requires Java Virtual Machine. And, uh, and probably they succeeded. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, there is alpha version already, but if you can execute Kotlin without uh, Java Virtual Machine, then you can execute it on iOS. And in this way, you can write your code once in Kotlin and then reuse it on uh, different platforms. So it might be quite interesting competitor of uh, C++. But let's get back to C++. So when you create your application with use of C++, you must decide how much of C++ you want to put inside. And uh, of course, uh, the best variant for us is that we want to put everything. So uh, there is no boundary between C++ and any other languages. But unfortunately, if you want to have a native look and feel of your application, if you want uh, your user uh, to just uh, know how to use your application, uh, no matter if it's uh, iOS or Android, then probably you need to use some uh, platform-specific APIs. So the other variant is uh, to divide your application into at least two layers. One is called uh, platform agnostic, and in this layer all the C++ code is uh, written. So um, the code that may be executed no matter what platform it runs on. And uh, the second layer is platform specific that uh, just deals with these uh, specific APIs on Android and uh, iOS. And in my opinion, the best language to use such specific uh, code is uh, just one specific to the given platform, so probably Java or Objective-C. And, uh, sorry, yeah. so uh, the last thing is uh, bridging code. So if you want to mix uh, C++ and uh, Java or C++ and Objective-C, then you need to write some uh, extra code, and uh, it is called sometimes glue code, sometimes bridging code, and uh, there are some special requirements regarding uh, this, uh, this layer. So uh, those languages differ, simply. And a uh, simple example, when we have in C++ integrals, they can be both, they can be unsigned, they, they can be signed. In case of Java, th there are only signed integrals. So let's say that you create some C++ API that accepts uh, only unsigned values, only positive values, and Java may just uh, pass to you some negative value, and what <laughs> then you do. Uh, so this bridging code uh, needs to deal somehow with those differences. Uh, the next thing uh, might be exceptions. So uh, if you execute inside Java code some C++ code and something wrong will happen, and uh, an ex exception will be thrown, then it would be great to catch this exception in Java. So uh, this is only a responsibility of uh, this uh, bridging code. And uh, the other one might be memory management. So of course, uh, in Java, we have this garbage collector approach. In C++, uh, we solve uh, the problem in a bit different way. And, uh, and yes, and also some code must be responsible for those uh, differences, okay? As I told you uh, on, uh, on previous slides, uh, there is something that is called Java Native Interface that lets us communicate C++ and Java. There is also something that is called Objective-C++ that uh, lets you communicate Objective-C and C++. So, regarding creating such uh, code, uh, you may handwrite it, and uh, that is uh, completely fine if you have small projects, if you have some special needs, so if you want uh, want to loosen or uh, to strengthen those uh, requirements from the previous slide. But uh, in uh, the project that I work on in, uh, in TomTom, we have nearly 35,000 of C++ uh, code only in this bridging uh, layer. Okay? We have also nearly 10,000 of lines of Java, and nobody from us wants to write it uh, by uh, our own. Okay? Uh, especially that uh, that might be quite error prone. Fortunately for us, it might be auto generated. So uh, there are a few approaches on the market. One is called Swig, 
and uh, it is quite mature uh, project. Uh, it uh, supports uh, generation of uh, binding code between C, C++ and many other like PHP, JavaScript, uh, Python, and of course uh, Java. Unfortunately, it does not uh, generate this Objective-C++ code, Objective-C++ wrappers. So that might be an issue, but uh, I will tell you more things about that uh, on next slides. And, uh, and it is uh, C or C++ centric. And uh, what I mean by that is uh, that if you have already some code written in C++, then uh, that is great because uh, Swig may just uh, grab your headers and generate from that uh, a bridging code. So uh, not much to write uh, on your own. Uh, there is uh, only this uh, small interface definition file. Um, I don't want to uh, explain everything here, but the most important are those includes. So if you want to uh, use this business logic HPP, you can just include it and uh, uh, Swig uh, will do with uh, just a small support uh, everything uh, else. Uh, so that's uh, quite cool. And uh, you will get in this way all this uh, um, yeah, so you will get in this way all this uh, C++ and uh, Java generated. Uh, probably you need okay, you need to believe me. Uh, so um, I don't want to also uh, uh, make you understand this code because uh, it is just uh, something that uh, follows the the same uh, schemes, and uh, that is probably the reason why uh, Michael Woj decided to write a framework that will just. Uh, reduce all this uh, repetitive uh, uh, stuff, okay? Um, also, we have this uh, Java code, and what I wanted to show you here is, of course, that we have this uh, hello world method uh, that uh, will just communicate uh, Java with uh, C++, but we have also some methods uh, uh, needed for uh, memory management. So you have this finalize uh, method that calls delete method and uh, calls some special uh, Java native interface uh, code uh, related to uh, just uh, cleaning up uh, memory. Okay, so if you want to use this uh, uh, Swig uh, generated code, uh, what you need to do is uh, load a library, uh, you just the code compiled, C++ co code compiled uh, the shared library. And uh, when you do it, uh, then you have business logic uh, class that was that is quite the same as class written in C++ uh, with only uh, one difference, it is uh, auto-generated. And you call all these methods uh, that were inside C++ in the same way. All right, uh, the next uh, possible approach is uh, Gini that uh, differs a bit. Uh, it has existed for only three years, so uh, it's probably a bit less mature than uh, Swig, but uh, it is more focused on mobile development. So you have uh, binding between C++ and Java, Objective-C and Python, and uh, it is ideal centric. So uh, there is a small difference, uh, and uh, the difference is that the difference is that uh, you need to create a special uh, interface definition language file uh, that uh, just uh, tries in easy way explain what uh, how this interface between C++ and Java or uh, between C++ and uh, Objective-C uh, will look like. So uh, here you see a, an interface, business logic, that will be implemented in, uh, in C++ uh, that has uh, two methods, one static that is called create, uh, some factory method, and uh, the other one that is called hello world. This is a small difference between Swig and, uh, and Gini because Gini doesn't allow you to define um, your, your constructors in interfaces. So you need to use some, uh, some uh, factory methods. Uh, this is one thing, but uh, because of this uh, ideal approach, uh, one extra thing is feasible, and that is uh, you don't have to have any C++ code written to start developing Java part or Objective-C part, okay? So uh, in case of Swig, uh, this is a C++ team 
C++ developers who drive the project. If there is no C++ code, there is no API that you can use. And in case of Gini, uh, you may just generate this code from uh, such uh, small uh, interface definition. So that's pretty cool. So uh, Gini will uh, produce for you also some C++ interface that you just need to use, inher inherit from that, and, uh, and that's it. The thing that you might not like uh, is that we have those uh, virtual methods here. And uh, yeah, that's uh, some small uh, loss of performance. But uh, if you compare it to uh, a cost of uh, Java native interface call, this is nothing. So, um, so yeah. And uh, if you want to choose uh, one, uh, then uh, you will ask you a few questions. Uh, one is, uh, do we start at uh, Greenfield? If yes, then probably Gini is a uh, nicer thing, especially if you have no much experience in creating mobile applications. Uh, if you have already some C++ uh, API, then uh, using Swift could be easier. Just because uh, Gini will still generate for you this C those C++ interfaces. And uh, then you have to marry them somehow with your API. So you need to do some extra work to just uh, yeah, adapt them. And uh, yeah, that's one reason. The other one is, uh, do you expect easiness or uh, customization? If you expect easiness, choose Gini. Uh, if you expect uh, uh, good uh, customization, choose uh, Swig. Probably if you just produce uh, an application, and the final product of you is uh, just a mobile application, then uh, easiness is a good choice. But if you develop, as we do in TomTom, a uh, library that may be used by uh, other companies, uh, then uh, customization is a uh, quite nice thing. So another reason, uh, or another thing that you need to ask yourself uh, is uh, Swift support. Uh, do I want to support Swift easily or less easily? And uh, what is the story be behind uh, that? Uh, Swift cannot easily cooperate with C++. It can easily cooperate with uh, Objective-C and Objective-C++. So uh, if you don't have this auto-generated Objective-C++ code, then you need to handwrite it to let Swift execute C++. So Gini, by generating this Objective-C++, allows you to uh, use it in, uh, in Swift. In case of Swift, uh, you have to write it on your own, uh, but yeah, it is still feasible. Just, uh, a small cost to pay. Regarding customization, <laughs> examples that uh, uh, might be uh, some reasons uh, to choose one on or the other, namespaces. In Gini, you may say what namespace uh, should be used for all auto-generated code, but it's only one namespace. It, it is only one package in uh, Java. And in case of uh, Swig, you may uh, use some Carico uh, namespaces or packages. Also, in uh, Gini, you may define uh, one type of exceptions uh, that will be uh, caught uh, between language barriers, and uh, usually it is not one. And in case of Swig, uh, you may use uh, different exceptions uh, uh, on a method basis, so that's pretty cool. Okay, so... Uh that's it regarding uh, this bridging code. Uh, so now let's try to create some other Android application. And uh, let's start with some basics. So in Android, uh, you usually use Android Studio uh, as uh, your IDE. Uh, you use uh, Gradle for your build system. And uh, uh, you need to know that there are Android NDK that stands for Native Development Kit. That uh, is just a set of tools. Uh, uh, that you may need during uh, native development. So there are tool chains, debugger, APIs, etc. Et uh, in SDK, you have uh, ADB that uh, is responsible for many things, but uh, for instance, it allows you to transfer files between your, uh, your computer and uh, device. Uh, it allows you to install, uh, the install applications. It allows you to uh, grab a screenshot uh, from, uh, uh, from your device. So yeah, this is uh, those. This one is uh, a command line tool, and uh, AVD has some uh, visual uh, representation. So AVD stands for Android uh, 
virtual uh, device. So it's just a manager of simulators. So if you de develop your Android application, you don't have to own your own uh, mobile phone. You can just uh, use uh, simulators. Okay. So uh, fortunately to me, uh, Android Studio provides uh, a template for uh, showing how to mix uh, C++ and Java. So uh, preparing this part of presentation was quite easy because I just uh, made screenshots. Uh, okay, the one little thing that you need to do when you uh, go through this wizard of creating a new Android project is uh, to include uh, C++ support. You see, uh, and uh, and yeah, and that's it. Uh, the other things that uh, might be quite important is uh, choosing uh, right uh, API version. And uh, probably most of you know something about versioning of Android. So there is Android KitKat, uh, that is Android 4.4, or Android Marshmallow, Android uh, 6.0. Uh, but uh, we as developers, we rather communicate uh, with uh, this uh, Android. Uh, API versions. And uh, regarding uh, reaching your users, if you want to have uh, more users, you need to support more devices. So you need to support older versions of uh, Android. Uh, but on the other hand, if you decide to uh, support uh, too low uh, API version, then uh, you will probably need to uh, write a quite complex code that will handle with all differences between APIs you won't get uh, the newest uh, features in your application. So uh, supporting uh, everything uh, has no use. I think uh, currently supporting uh, API version 19 uh, is uh, quite okay, because in this way you reach about 90% uh, of uh, users. And there is one uh, thing that uh, I would like you to remember from this slide. Uh, uh, this Android 4.4 uh, was released in 2013. I will refer to this uh, in a few slides. Okay, so next thing uh, that uh, we have in, uh, in our wizard is uh, defining activity. And uh, for those of you that don't know, activity is just some uh, visual representation uh, of the screen. So it is just a set of controls and how those controls interact uh, with each other. And uh, when you have it, uh, you need to know that uh, activity has a quite complex life cycle. So uh, usually we don't try to have more activities than one, because, uh, because uh, you need to think of each uh, possible state that uh, this activity may be in. And you need to think about each possible uh, way to go from one state to another. So uh, because of that, uh, we try to make things uh, easy. And uh, if you want to have uh, multiple screens in your application, then you rather use fragments or you rather use custom views, uh, but uh, use only one activity. Okay. And uh, yeah, then uh, you need to bind your activity with a layout that is just an XML file that defines all the controls and uh, some visual relations between them. Uh, you may write it uh, on your own uh, in XML, but uh, I really recommend uh, at the beginning to use uh, Visual uh, Designer for that. Uh, of course, when you will Google uh, things related to layouts, how to do that or this, uh, then, uh, uh, then you will see this XML. So it is good to know how to place a part of uh, layout, part of XML into your bigger layout. Uh, uh, but yeah, at the beginning, uh, uh, visual uh, tool is uh, enough. And uh, the last uh, slide from the uh, wizard is uh, some customization for C++. So you may use uh, default uh, uh, toolchain that is uh, currently C++ 14. Um, because of some historical reasons, uh, by default, you have no exception support and no runtime uh, type uh, information support. So uh, if you require them, just uh, take those two. OK, so let's switch to the code. And uh, here you have uh, yet another XML file that is quite important, uh, manifest file. And here you define everything uh, 
that is uh, general to your application, like uh, the name of your application, where the icon of the application is stored, uh, what will be the entry point of your application, so which activity should be run first, especially if you have a uh, lot of them. Uh, the next thing is uh, RPR emissions. So uh, if your camera uses, uh, sorry, if your application uses camera, uh, then uh, then you need to say to user that uh, I need this permission, I need to use camera. And of course, user may uh, give it uh, this permission to you or not, and then uh, one cannot uh, run your application. Okay, so when you have it, uh, you also need to have your activity. And, and uh, yeah, this activity, okay, uh, is, <laughs> is, Gosh, this is not my day. Uh, okay, this activity uh, might look a bit uh, similar to the example that I showed you with uh, use of Swig code. So you have this uh, system load library to load your C++ uh, uh, code, and uh, you have this onCreate that uh, maps to this uh, uh, to this lifecycle diagram. Uh, so uh, this is just one of states, and here you load your layout. Uh, you may just uh, retrieve some controls and do something with those controls. So here I set text of this text view uh, for the value that is returned by met method uh, string from geni, and uh, you see that this method is uh, is marked as native. There is no body of this method, so this uh, this code will be uh, provided in uh, C++. Uh, and here you see, uh, once again, uh, this, uh, this implementation. So uh, Java native interface is not uh, really nice, uh, but you see that we can use std string and uh, somehow convert it to use it uh, in Java. Okay, and of course, if you need more business lo logic here, you just need to need to uh, extend this method. Of course, I encourage you to use Gini or Swig to auto-generate this part. Uh, this is only to show you some uh, basic examples. Okay, of course, uh, you need to build somehow your uh, C++ code, and uh, fortunately, currently, there is CMake support in Android Studio. So in the past, uh, people didn't really like to create uh, Android applications with use of C++ because uh, there were no, uh, no support for uh, official support for, uh, for CMake in Gradle. And uh, there were some experimental plugins, and everything uh, was changing from version to version. So you need to uh, change your build system all the time, or just use some outdated version of plugin. Oh yeah, you see something uh, next? That's cool. And <laughs> and uh, and currently in Android 3.0, uh, that shouldn't be a problem. So yeah, so yeah, this is your application. Uh, cool. Uh, it printed some, some text from C++. Uh, and uh, if you want to uh, run this application on your uh, phone, then uh, you need to uh, switch uh, developer mode. And uh, I'm not sure how it works in case of uh, your phones, but in mine it was tapping seven times on this build number. And then Android device just somehow recognizes that you are a developer and provides you some extra stuff. So maybe you won't uh, create your Android applications uh, after this talk, but you can switch this developer mode. Uh, okay, so that's it. You have your Android application ready, and now let's uh, switch to iOS. So unfortunately, you must own Mac. Uh, fortunately to m for me, uh, my company provided one for me, so uh, that's good. But this is just uh, some uh, Apple policy, and yeah, we just need to live with it. Live with it. And uh, this is uh, the reason why those guys that use create that create the uh, applications with uh, use of Xamarin, that they also need to own Mac, even if they develop it on Windows, because uh, they just cannot uh, uh, run a building uh, uh, iOS application. The next thing is uh, you need to have uh, an account uh, uh, in an uh, Apple network uh, that is called Developer ID. And this Developer ID will uh, give you um, a lot of opportunities. Uh, one of them is you may create your provisioning profile. So 
uh, thing that uh, connects you with uh, with your product or your team with your product and uh, lets you put some constraints uh, on your application. So let's say it cannot run on some specific devices. Uh, yeah, and uh, the last good thing uh, is uh, that. Uh, even if you have to use Xcode, that is uh, default IDE for creating uh, iOS uh, applications, you may auto-generate Xcode project from CMake. Uh, so you just need to uh, put some generation flag there. And uh, when you have it, uh, now we get back to this uh, knowledge about Android versioning. Uh, we see that in order to support 90% of users, uh, you just need to support a version of iOS from the previous year. So uh, this is uh, a huge difference uh, between Android and iOS. There are no middlemen between uh, Apple and, uh, and the final user. So they adapt the newest version of iOS uh, really quickly. And uh, unfortunately, uh, in case of Android, uh, you need to wait maybe a few years. Uh, maybe you will never get uh, the newest Android version. Uh, okay, so of course you need to decide how many users uh, you want to support. Uh, unfortunately, Apple doesn't provide uh, more fine-grained information, but uh, I think that's uh, that's enough. Uh, and uh, when you have it, uh, then let's uh, compare things that we learn about Android with uh, some uh, iOS stuff. So we have no activities, we have view controllers, but uh, it's uh, quite uh, the same. So uh, it is just some representation of uh, your screen. And uh, there is also some code related to this uh, screen and controls that are here. So we have one label. And there is this uh, arrow at the left that uh, defines your start starting point, uh, which uh, view controller will run first. Uh, and uh, this is uh, a bit different approach than uh, defining uh, all of it in uh, some XML files. Uh, and uh, all view controllers, if you have more of them, are um, put in uh, one storyboard. So storyboard defines uh, how uh, how you can go from one view controller to another. Of course, storyboards of co uh, also lets you define view controllers and uh, controls used uh, in on such uh, view controller. OK. Um, when you want to make a relation between some control and uh, your code, uh, you need to use some visual tool. So that might be a bit of <laughs> magic at the beginning, but uh, it's quite convenient. Uh, so you just uh, link uh, visually a control with a place, with a code, with a specific file where you will use it. Uh, and yeah, and when you do it, uh, okay. uh, you have this uh, label in uh, this view controller interface. Objective C is uh, based uh, on C, so there are a lot of uh, similar concepts. So there are header files. And there are also implementation files. So implementation files uh, in Objective-C have M prefix, uh, suffix. And uh, you, have, uh, you see in line 14 that uh, we assign to this label, uh, to text property, some value that will be returned uh, from string from CPP call uh, method that uh, is uh, part of Objective-CPP wrapper. Uh, so I wrote some uh, Objective C++ code for you, even if I'm uh, not so familiar with this language, so it is not so hard. So uh, here you have header for this uh, Objective C++ wrapper, and you have uh, this one method uh, string from CP. So quite the same as you had uh, in uh, in Android, and uh, and uh, then you have Objective C++ code. Uh, as I said, uh, if you can auto-generate it, use Gini. Uh, Swig, unfortunately, doesn't allow you for that, so, so you need to write it on your own. Uh, anyway, here uh, it is something interesting, because you mix in one file uh, some uh, Objective-C uh, things, like imports with includes uh, from uh, C++. Uh, you see in uh, line uh, 10, uh, std string. So uh, and then there is some conversion of this std string to an s string. Uh, yeah. So in this way, uh, you can uh, you can uh, just mix uh, these uh, these two types of languages uh, together. Uh, of course, uh, just for um, having complete this uh, example, uh, you have uh, this simple C++ code, and then 
voila, it works, as you saw at the previous slide. Uh, yeah, if you want to run it on uh, your uh, Apple device, uh, I think the only thing, thing that you need to do is to tap that you trust this ap application. You just connect it with, uh, with a wire and uh, that should be it, probably. Uh, okay, so uh, some advice uh, from me, uh, because uh, when I started uh, to develop uh, mobile applications, uh, I had no idea about that and I made a lot of stupid mistakes, uh, so I don't want you to make the same. Uh, so first, uh, that might be a, a joke, but unfortunately it is not. Uh, find someone who is specialized on uh, those two platforms. It is really hard to know those two, those three uh, programming languages and uh, those two platforms uh, really well and being all the time up to date. So if you have anyone that knows something about Android or iOS, uh, just uh, bring them to your team and uh, do it together, never alone. Okay, next thing is... Uh, next two things. Next thing is uh, consulting your C++ boundaries. And uh, when you uh, choose this uh, mixed version of mixing C++ and, uh, and Java, then uh, you will see that, okay, here is some... Um, platform-specific API, so this is Java part, uh, and uh, the other is C++. And you put some boundary. And then you start developing your iOS uh, application, and you see that, oh, here uh, this uh, API is uh, not so nice as Android one, so the boundary must be on the other place. And uh, the code that I called uh, platform agnostic uh, is now not fully platform agnostic, because you have those uh, two boundaries, not one. So uh, it is really hard to know all APIs of uh, those two platforms. So if you have just some, some friends that may help, help you with, uh, uh, with this platform specific uh, stuff, uh, just consult with them and put this boundary in one place. Uh, if you have none, uh, then uh, you can use some approximation and uh, use, for instance, Genie to generate for you this uh, bridging code. and. Uh, uh, by the way, also, Gini will let you know what uh, data types you may use. So if you see that uh, I need here some special uh, data type from Android, but Gini doesn't allow me uh, for use this data type, that's probably a signal that uh, you shouldn't uh, go further and put this boundary in this place. Uh, okay, next two things, of course. Uh, one of them is uh, understand what you copy-paste and uh, that might uh, sound also as a joke, uh, but unfortunately, there is always this desire to, to move fast. And uh, let's say that you decide not to test your UI because uh, it's hard. So you decide uh, to just uh, this UI specific things, copy paste from Stack Overflow. But uh, this is uh, like a bad path. Uh, you will have a lot of uh, um, caught a lot of uh, technical debt uh, because that might uh, seem that it works, but uh, unfortunately, when uh, your application gets more complex, think, uh, uh, things just stop to work. Because uh, all of those concepts behind uh, Android uh, or iOS uh, are not so easy, as uh, you see in this uh, chart for, uh, for those uh, activity lifecycle. Yeah? So, uh, first thing, uh, if you find something in uh, in Stack Overflow or anything uh, anywhere else, uh, copy it to your uh, sandbox application, some just uh, small application. Check if it's uh, what you really need, because that might be uh, not the case, uh, because that might uh, be something supported for really low uh, API versions, so there is a lot of uh, outdated information. And then understand everything, uh, read about uh, API, but also read about concepts, so reading only uh, like uh, class uh, classes uh, definitions uh, documentation is not enough, and when you have it, uh, you uh, you may rewrite it once again in your uh, final uh, product. Uh, so uh, the next week is Christax NDK. As I told you, uh, this Android NDK that uh, has uh, Bionic C and uh, all the stuff uh, um, had uh, bad moments in the past. Currently, it is improving. So. Uh, 
there were some features that weren't uh, supported, like uh, to string, for instance, from C++11. Uh, probably even now in some tool chains is not supported. And uh, if you just don't to want to live in frustration, then use Crystax NDK. Uh, I hope that in Android NDK uh, version 16, uh, you will have uh, good support of uh, C++11 and 14, but uh, uh, currently it, uh, it is not always uh, the case. Um, don't handwrite your virgin code. Uh, unfortunately, uh, this is something uh, uh, hard just to, uh, to start with. So uh, if you have no experience, auto-generate it. When you will get uh, all the ideas of mobile development, then uh, you can uh, get at this uh, uh, upper level and, uh, and try to write it on your own, if there is any point of doing that. Uh, if you want to uh, create your ap applications fast, your build system must run fast and uh, just build your application fast. So uh, by default in Android, uh, when you use uh, this uh, native uh, code, uh, it is compiled to each possible ABI or CPU architecture. And, uh, and, yeah, and usually you don't need all of them. You need only one for your mobile phone and maybe one for simulator. So uh, limit them in uh, your Gradle. And uh, of course, use C cache. Uh, and in, th in this way, your C++ code will compile even faster than Java. Okay. Uh, this one is uh, interesting. Uh, of course, most of you use Vim, and uh, that is, of course, a good choice. But uh, please just be aware that uh, there are some alternatives. And uh, mm, Xcode provides us uh, a few nice features, like, for instance, uh, uh, GPU frame debugging. That probably is cannot, uh, cannot be done in Vim currently. Uh, but uh, if you want uh, to use uh, those, uh, those IDEs like Xcode and Android, at least know them. At least know them to know what, what they uh, give it to you and uh, just switch from one to another depending on the uh, kind of task that you perform. Android Studio is probably good in refactoring because they have this uh, JetBrains engine inside, so uh, yeah, that should be also a nice thing. Uh, Last but not least, uh, use logging. Maybe uh, I don't know something, but currently I have no way to produce core dumps uh, at Android. Uh, and uh, you will just have uh, some uh, stack trace uh, uh, from C++ sometimes. And, uh, and that might be not enough to just know what happened wrong uh, during development. So. Uh, use uh, logging extensively and uh, just uh, turn it off uh, partially uh, in your production. Um, okay, so uh, that will be it. Uh, there are some links that I prepared for you, uh, if uh, I will be allowed to show you them. Yeah. Uh, so uh, if you have no idea about Android development, uh, this is the first one. If you have some knowledge about uh, Android development, but no experience with uh, Android uh, NDK, then visit second one. And this one is uh, really good. Uh, uh, at the beginning, I made this mistake that oh, I probably understand how those tools work. But uh, after you read it, uh, you, you will save like, I know, 40% of your time for just guessing things. Uh, if you want to use Crystax NDK, just download it. Uh, uh, Apple. Uh, has uh, quite nice uh, documentation or on their site uh, regarding iOS and uh, many others. Uh, if you want those, uh, this uh, bridging code to be auto-generated, use Swig or uh, Gini. Uh, Gini is uh, placed on uh, Dropbox uh, GitHub because uh, Dropbox is just an uh, initial offer of uh, this uh, solution. Uh, I have uh, two uh, small projects that uh, you may visit at my GitHub account. Uh, so uh, in this way, you may uh, learn some basics about uh, Android NDK uh, or, uh, I don't know, CMake uh, and configuring it for, uh, for Android uh, or iOS. And uh, the last uh, link, uh, this is uh, my previous talk uh, that I gave on mobilization. Uh, and uh, if you are interested in mixing C++ with Swift or with Kotlin, 
then uh, there will be a lot of information there. So that is now it. Yeah, okay. Uh, uh, there is some contact to me uh, for my Twitter and my website if you want to be in touch with me. I will uh, post uh, these uh, slides on my Twitter. So thank you. Yeah, thank you, Michal, very much for this. Yes, yes, warm applause. This was a great <laughs> presentation. I enjoyed a lot. Now time for your questions. Okay, let me jump up there. Can you raise... Hi, Michal. Nice speech. Hi. Um, let's say uh, I want to uh, write my first application uh, for my phone. Uh, I have never do that. And um, let's assume a simple case. I, I've got one, tel one phone um, with Android and uh, I don't want to support anything else than it. Uh, what do I need? Uh, let's say I will back today to my uh, home and uh, turn on computer. What do I need to start? Okay, uh, so uh, those things that I uh, shown to you, Android Studio is probably a uh, nice thing to have. Probably you can still develop your Android applications without that, but uh, that's uh, a bit complicated. So Android Studio. Uh, and if you want to use C++, because you don't have to, of course, uh, uh, but if you want uh, it, uh, then you need to un uh, download this uh, Android NDK. It is on this uh, second link uh, from, uh, from the last uh, uh, yeah, slide. And, uh, and is there anything diff else? Uh, of course, turn on your developer mode. Uh, and I think that's, uh, that's it. Uh, with those things that I shown to you, uh, you have already your application. So now it depends uh, what you exactly need, because maybe there are some special things that you need to install to. Uh, is it uh, an answer to your question? Yeah. Cool. We have here another one. Uh, hello, my name is Rafał. Hello. Uh, I wonder if you have any experience with uh, Unity 3D uh, no. integrations? On the on the mobile platforms? Unfortunately, not. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. Ah, the mic is on the other side there. Uh, I have a question regarding a previous uh, question. Uh, <laughs> do you know uh, about integration C line with uh, Android Studio? Because as I know, IntelliJ IDEA support it. Well, probably. And I know that C line is uh, for writing C++. And yeah. as I know, IntelliJ support uh, support integration between Android Studio and another uh, projects. Yeah. Uh, as for me, uh, regarding to your this stem, um, using C line it will be better. Okay. As for me. Uh, I understand. Uh, so. Uh it is all about uh, just uh, running this uh, build Gradle, and uh, so uh, Gradle uh, may produce for you this application and uh, may also uh, help you run this application on your device. So uh, this is uh, the, the only thing that uh, uh, might be probably uh, uh, an issue, but uh, uh, to be honest, uh, I did it only once, uh, so uh, if you have a time after this talk, we you may check it on my computer. I s think I still have this C-Lion, so uh, probably you can do it. Uh. I have an an another qu question. Yeah. Um, can you uh, talk about uh, publish your own application to Apple Store? Uh, I because never tried this one. I only work for uh, companies that uh, yeah, do it. Uh, uh, instead of me, <laughs> so. Uh, but uh, do you have any specific question? Maybe I can answer. No, because I know that it's uh, more harder than uh, publish application to Google. Uh, I only heard about uh, quality requirements. Uh, so if uh, your application crashes or if it's just uh, too slow, if you don't have the 60 FPS, uh, then uh, probably it will be rejected. But uh, yeah, that's okay. it. Thanks. Thank you. Would anyone else? 
would like to ask a question. Okay, in the front. Uh, hi. Uh, what hi. about other tools for Android? Uh, have you ever tried uh, make up a whole project, uh, build and the rest of this with some independent tools without uh, using Android Studio or something like that? Uh, you you may of course do that. Uh, this is just uh, not so uh, not so nice to write uh, because uh, in my opinion Java is a great language if you use uh, Eclipse or or uh, IntelliJ, okay? So uh, you may just, uh, when, when you have this Gradle, yeah? Uh, so maybe that's something that was missing uh, in this uh, presentation. When you have this Gradle, you may just uh, uh, run from command line uh, building it. Uh, so building the all project uh, of uh, Android with all dependencies, including CMake. Uh, so uh, when, when that, that's it probably. Yeah. It should work everything. Of course, you, you need uh, to have uh, this Android and, uh, SDK installed, and uh, usually uh, you have it in uh, your Android Studio, but uh, but it is not in your path. So you just need to add it to your path or just uh, install it uh, independently, and and then it should work. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thank you.